May the one who began a good work, may the one who began a good work, may the one who began a good work be faithful to complete it in you. glad to have all of you, youth people as well as uh, a number of our charter members and uh, what I did was invite people to join the church uh, no later than 1950. So some of our people are out of town or weren't able to be here, but uh, what I'd like to do is let people introduce themselves and maybe tell something that they remember. And I'm going to start with Mrs. Johnson, who is one of the charter members. Uh, she and her husband, Dr. Pope Johnson, were among the first members of Waverly Road Church when the church was chartered in 1946. What do you want me to tell? Something that... Tell... Just... All right. Whatever you... <laughs>
Uh, do you remember going to Sunday school in the drugstore over here? No, I went, I went to Sunday school here, and, and the old man with me is you know, on the book, which is this, this, uh, this little building. This right here. Yeah. That, was, that was visited at the, uh, actually, it was the office, but the part was behind us. And uh, it came uh, available, and the church bought it. And it was just, that's where I got started. In Sunday school here, and it's and it's little building. And, and I am the, uh, the only member of this first generation of the church who has not left the church. And they've been saying we just left and came back, mm -hmm. but we the only one who has not left. And we all do. People when we first started, you could call everybody by the first name, and everybody that's the way I was. Everybody's called by the first name, went by the first names. This is Harold Austin, and Austin's joined the church in what year? 49. 49? We're one of the younger groups. <laughs> <laughs> With this whole bunch here. <laughs> <laughs> no, what a, it's, we have, or I have many very pleasant memories of the church starting out, one of which was again in the original part of the church and everyone and I can we would bring uh, our daughter we had to go pop baby stove in that and as we come into church and sit on folding chairs he'd always get her a small child chair and sit in the aisle for and so she could sit beside of us. Mm -hmm. John McKenna, I mean, it's the first time he asked me to be uh, a deacon. I happened to be working under my floor, which is about a two foot, two foot uh, crawl space. Next thing I know, here comes a guy under there <laughs> just to find out what, what I was doing and what I serve on the board of deacons. <laughs> you can't get away from this. <laughs> White and King has been the historian for our church for a long time. He has kept track of uh, of our history, and as a part of our anniversary celebration, uh, King has updated a book that he did in uh, 1986 at the time of our 40th anniversary that he called "Be Thou Our Vision," and um, he has updated it, and we've had it printed up and. Um, so he knows a lot about our history, probably more details than anybody else. And King, you joined in 1950, is that right? Yes, we were contemporaries with the Austins. <laughs> well, it was a week or two different um, because uh, of babysitting problems. Mother couldn't come one Sunday, I could. And we had to swap off. But my first uh, connection with Ringley Road was earlier than that because in 1944 I was overseas and I received a letter from Dr. Tom Johnston who was pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of which this Sunday school out here was uh, just an outpost ministry at that time and he was he wrote me about what was what was happening out here and what they were beginning and then in the next summer when was back home and uh, uh, he was filled me in on the details. That so was about four years before we moved over onto this side of uh, Kingsport and became uh, part of this congregation at the same time as John McKenna. Now, I think our Sundays were, first Sundays here were either the same or, or uh, well, connecting. And, uh, then we received, a, a few months later, we received a visit from uh, one of our favorite couples, John and Jenny C., who invited us to become members of this church, and neither, neither one of us had a real good reason why we shouldn't. <laughs> so that was it, and uh, we've seen it grow and grow to love uh, the church and love the, the people in it, and we felt their love for us.
I feel the same way. I'm Ann Morrison Garber, and my mother and daddy brought me here. They were charter members, and I was about three and a half years old when they came to join Waverly Road. And I hate to say this, but uh, it might tell our ages, Ann, but you were in my Sunday school class. I certainly was. <laughs> I certainly was. I remember that well. And um, I had the privilege, like you have, of growing up, or most of you, of growing up in Waverly Road Church and um, being taught by people like Mrs. Brenner and Ms. Carson and wonderful people. And um, I just, it has been a real privilege for me. Oh, uh, come in. Hi. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going to, let's see, I'll pass on to Mr. Rankin and let him talk about it for a minute. I'm Irvin Rankin. <clears throat> I've been here since before the beginning. <laughs> we, uh, I was in the first Presbyterian church when the idea arose of establishing an outpost in this area. And so the session of that church hired Mr. Curry to come and be the chapel minister, particularly related to the way the road process. Or I'm not sure of the timing, for at least a year we met in a portion of what used to be the beauty school over here. And we had pews and we had a pulpit and we had services. Sometimes we had as many as ten, but most of the time is anywhere from six to eight people who came for the worship service. But prior to that, we had Sunday school, and I don't know where all the children came from, but we had somewhere in the range of 40 or 50 children who came to the Sunday school. That continued for about a year, and it was decided that that was time to begin considering having a church, which we did, and uh, I was working with Mr. George E. Stone, who was a local grocer at that time, and he had uh, recruited me from the First Presbyterian Church to come out here with him for the Sunday school. Well, Mr. Stone was a longtime elder at the First Church, and he did not see fit to stay with the program, so that kind of left me holding the bag. Uh, but it was a pleasant situation because I had gotten very much attached to the young people that were attending and to the adults as well. Uh, during that early stage of things, uh, Bonnie Bruner was our pianist. We, Want to be sure she was here because we need the preacher and a, and a pianist in order to have services. <laughs> I remember one occasion when there were four of us the speaker, the pianist, and two of us in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> we, as the old joke goes, we gave the whole uh, load of hay that, mor that morning, <laughs> but uh, the work continued to grow, and uh, that's why we grew a church. And this is Mr. John C., who joined uh, in probably 40, what, 47 or 48? Yeah, that's right, 48. Uh, I, I don't remember whether it was 47 <laughs> or 48, but because it was in the winter time. Uh, I, like so many <coughs> other people in Kingsport, came after the war. I was in the Navy for five years and came with a wife and two children, and uh, we went to work for Eastman, but uh, needed uh, outlets in the same condition that Keenan mentioned. Uh, I have babysitting problems. You have children you can't leave. Uh, I want to tell one story and then I'll pass it on. Uh, 
the little church that they've been talking about here on the front. Uh, after Marion Curry left, I joined while Marion Curry was, we joined while Marion Curry was here. And after he left, we called uh, John McKinnon. And John came and looked over the situation and asked where he was going to live. And one member, and I, I looked, I couldn't remember, the member wasn't an officer, I won't mention who the member was, you'll re recognize why in a minute, uh, said, well, that's, that's easy. Uh, this little church had a bathroom and two or three little rooms on the back side. They said, well, uh, we can get a grill, and you got a bathroom, and there's a room, and you can push the bed over and, and they, uh, on Sunday morning, and they can live right here. Uh, and they, this couple was real, real upset because the rest of us didn't quite go along with it. <laughs> but uh, that's one of the amusing things that uh, I remember. After that, we started a few years after that, we started a building program. And I've been involved in the building program until the younger generation has started remodeling. But, uh, all of the buildings that are here now, uh, I was deeply involved in. And me and my family have certainly enjoyed Waverly Road Church. And this is Mrs. Lily's Carpenter, and Ms. Carpenter was one of the charter members. And the best I can remember, I believe, I was in at uh, the Armour Drugstore building the first Sunday when we had services. Is that one? With Jimmy and Diane and, uh, and Holly went to, with us. We had... Uh, such a few members in the congregation and wonderful sermons, but just six of them. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Dr. T. P. Johnston and an especially good sermon on Sunday, but just six. And uh, speaking of building funds, we were, when we started to to build the church that came to each of us. And most of us didn't have any money, and we only had our houses we just bought, but we signed a note. And uh, we, I don't know that anyone ever refused to uh, sign the note, and we, uh, we have our building. And this is Mrs. Genevieve Ganaway, and she came along in what year did you oh, join? I'm not sure if it was 48 or 49, but it was during John McKinnon's reign. We came then, and we've watched Waverly Road grow since then, even along with uh, our dear friend Blackie, who was Bill Childs' dog. Uh, <laughs> Blackie used to come to church on Sunday evenings, oh, really? along with the minister who ever lived over on the street here. Uh, and I've enjoyed it ever since. You were a neighbor of the McKinnons, weren't you? Yes. Along with uh, Catherine's grandmother and grandfather were neighbors over there, too. Mm -hmm. uh, they talked about Dr. T.P. Johnston, who was the minister at First Church. This is a picture of Dr. Johnston and uh, another man who was an associate minister at First Presbyterian Church, Russell Buffalo. And they are selecting the site that our church is built on. And this, is, uh, this picture was in 1943. And you can see in the background, you can see Pinola Avenue and this street right in here is Prospect Drive, which runs along the back side of the church. And all this vacant lot right in here, vacant land, used to be a golf course. 
I can in many a day. Did you really? <laughs> and if you lost the ball, you didn't caddy anymore because they caught the quarter. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you couldn't lose those, could you? I remember when that golf course was there, and I remember, uh, what was that building there? American the American Legion building, yeah. and it burned. And oh, I went the country to, club. That's the country club. Oh, the country club. Okay. Yeah. Country club. <laughs> Real well. Anyway, it burned, and uh, that was when I was going to Lincoln School, and we lived, uh, not on Pinola, but we lived on Midland Drive in one of the little houses back in there. And we used to walk to school right by that building after it burned, and our parents had just told us that we could not go near that burned out building, and of course that was exactly where we wanted to go, because it was so interesting, Look, all this broken glass and everything, all the walls torn down. <laughs> And I, I was in school, and my sister, my uh, class, place is that I, I, we saw the, the building burn completely down. Uh, oh. we, 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 he, the teacher said, "Here, youngest, go to the window, just stay in, just walk it, please walk it, come go to the ground." Okay. Uh, first church, of course, was downtown, and as Kingsport <coughs> started, you know, most of the people lived down in that area. And as uh, the town began to grow and all these little houses were built out here after World War II when lots of men came back from the war to settle in Kingsport with their families, they built all these little houses out here and gas was still hard to get and people, everybody just had one car. They were lucky if they had one car. And uh, so you didn't want to have to go very far on a regular basis. So that was the reason for this little outpost way out in the suburbs <laughs> being built. Why the children didn't have any transportation? But so you had to walk to school? They had to walk to the Sunday school. And they came by dozens. Mm -hmm. you, if you've looked at some of the pictures that we have out on the bulletin boards, you can see the big groups of uh, children. Well, this is a lot of people for a little tiny building like that. And uh, that was uh, in the late 40s. What questions do you all have that you'd like to, to ask? When I came here, and we had the 2017 meeting the other night, and they asked us what the, what the dream was for Kingsport. And I said, 70 years ago when I came to Kingsport, I saw people living in tents and shacks, and I never dreamed it would be Kingsport like it is today. That's mm -hmm. a great dream after 70 years. Really is. It's hard for you all to imagine what things were like back then. You're talking about church <laughs> churches? <laughs> I, I, I was a church in the church in 2017. As a, as a uh, growing up here, remember, I think the kids will enjoy this story. One of my fondest memories is when we were in junior high and high school, we used to all sit on the back row. All the kids would line up on the back row. And we would always run between Sunday school and church to Armor Drug Store, which is, what, the beauty school now? Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry, to Peggy Ann Restaurant. Yeah. And we'd go to Peggy Ann, it was just a little restaurant right there, and we'd get candy and stuff for church. So one Sunday morning I ran back and it was winter and I had a coat on and I had bought a box of atomic fireballs, red hots. <laughs> and I, I put my coat back on the on the pew uh, very quietly and stuck the fireballs down in my pocket so they wouldn't make noise every time I get one. Well, right as church started, I started putting my coat back like, like this and I think it was Donna Patton was sitting behind me and she reached and pulled my coat to help me and all the fireballs <laughs> ran down the pew. <laughs> got the biggest ice cream cone of George Arms anywhere in town. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's where we always used to go after school when I was in high school up at Army Grade Store. <laughs> Y'all have other questions that you can think of that you'd like to know about? I'd like to tell you about T.P. Johnson. Oh, okay. I knew him personally. Uh -huh. He was a before he came to Abbey, uh, Kingsport. And when I, we moved to Kingsport, I was president. 
in the old Presbyterian church there. But I had to divide 1919 when I stayed with my grandmother. She was a Methodist. She was a charter member at Broad Street. And I got in doctor and then my aunt, Nancy Pierce, was one of the first pianists at the Episcopal Church. She, she was one. She was a janitor. You were talking about a janitor and a teacher and all for the first for the Episcopal Church there. Uh, 1923. Uh, There's a lot of history that our church is in Kingsville. Yeah. You know, all of the photographs that we have on the boards, I don't see any pictures of the uh, times when we had Sunday school in the barber shop and in the uh, wishy-washy Christian group that met in the Washington. We do the have Sunday We've got some up on the boards too, mm -hmm. but um, well, one of the jobs of, of the first person that arrived in the uh, Washateria, um, I don't know if you know this, if any uh, uh, customers leave garments inside the dryer, forget to take them out, and there can be a lot of unmentionables. It was their job to the, the owners would take those things and hang them up on a line. <laughs> so you could identify and take them home with you the next time you came. You know, well, Sunday morning, that particular person who may have had to um, go in and take those things down, you know, <laughs> so it would be proper for a Sunday school. <laughs> this was because we didn't have enough room over here for all of our Sunday school classes. So these buildings right across the street, there was a laundromat. There's still a laundromat over there, and there's still a barber shop over there. And those people allowed us to have Sunday school classes over there. And also, you'll see on this board right out here, a Sunday school class in the coat closet. So we were just looking everywhere we could to find places to have Sunday school. Well, I remember when I started to teach Sunday school, we met in trailers oh. next to this little building. You know. mm -hmm. but also, we, I, I had a Sunday school class in the borrow room. And water stood down. Yeah, water stood. <laughs> and, and we they had, they had these uh, little boards. boards stretched across there. You had to get the Sunday school chair just right. The legs to fit, you know, so they wouldn't tip over. But kids, you know, they had to go like this. <laughs> One of the big problems we had with our first building was finding a way to heat it. And I mentioned the hot belly stove, which we tried first, and that was too hot in spots. <laughs> so we went from that to kerosene heater, and that was still wartime, so we couldn't get oil without a small amount at a time. And several Sunday mornings, I went to the service station to get enough oil to heat for our Sunday service. But the last thing we tried was a, a gas heater mounted in the ceiling. And every time it came on, it popped, so that interfered with the preacher. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we lived through that, but it was quite an ordeal. So young folks, appreciate this building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Hill and Austin have left the room when we yeah. went around your spot, so we need to give you a chance. I think they all, most of them, now. we've done that. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see, Bonnie and I taught Sunday school together. Yeah. And I remember Mr. and Ms. Rankin coming to visit us and bringing us cookies. Any time we didn't show up at church, they'd come by to see what <laughs> See, it was small enough then, they missed you when you weren't here. All right. right. It made a big difference if you just had six people. If two people didn't show yeah. up. And Bob Miller got me to go to choir, and I did. And Carol and Doris would sit with the children every Sunday, and they thought Harold and Doris were husband and wife. <laughs> Dylan also was uh, the church secretary for a long time, so she worked with Collier, with Collier Harvey, who was one of our ministers, who uh, will be back with us uh, during the anniversary week. Who is the choir director? What was his name? The Thomas Blackwood. Mr. Blackwood. Mr. Blackwood was a 
character. Yeah. He, yeah. he directed the children's choirs, too, and he was extremely strict. He was, was tall and skinny, like Helen said. Real tall and skinny. He was real strict. He did very it. formal. Yeah. Very formal. And I think he got very. married, what, late in life? It was late in life, and he was well, he was well, <laughs>
starting at 9 o'clock. And so had them both and I came in at the same time. I said, tell you what we're going to do tonight. I said, yeah, what's that? This is five minutes to nine. I'm going to move it. We adjourn. Will you second? I said, you sure will. <laughs> and so we'll leave in at nine o'clock, regardless of what they're doing. We did. <laughs> <laughs> opportunity to bring the generations together to learn one from the other. We thank you for the heritage that we are enjoying now, the result of the hard work, the commitment, the in terms of energy and time and, and finances and even their houses if that's what it would take to build this church. We thank you for the blessings that you have rained down upon us through all of these years. We pray that we will be a church here until you choose to come back and take us with you. And we pray your blessings on the young people, which are the church of tomorrow, that they will be just as dedicated and committed to you as their grandparents and the faith have been. And we pray that we will learn from their example. In Christ's name, amen. <laughs> Nice job. Uh, <laughs> 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 